Hello artist! In today's video I will be sharing my painting process using gouache, watercolors, and some other fun art supplies. I hope you will enjoy this video. Let me know if you enjoy these longer videos. I thought it would just be fun to spend quite a bit of time talking about process, supplies, all the artsy good stuff. So sit back and relax and enjoy. And of course, you're invited to paint along. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media intuitive artist based in Austria, in Europe. And on my channel, I share my artsy adventures. I try to post new videos every week and I try to mix it up with process videos and then also videos about my favorite supplies, my art studio, all that good stuff. So. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so that I know what you like. And of course, I invite you to subscribe. I felt inspired today by some of the fall colors that I'm seeing outside. My style is generally quite abstract, uh, but I do like to suggest things from my world, from my environment, um, from, you know, memories. I do consider my art to have a very kind of strong element of nostalgia and um, just this kind of dreamlike, messy mind, I like to call it, <laughs> atmosphere on the paper, which just feels very very authentic to me and it's just a joy to paint like this so i thought i would try to incorporate some tree like shapes let's say and again i i you know it takes time for me to find exactly the right shapes and the right colors uh, to make it feel like me always <laughs> so I you'll see me also experimenting here a little bit I'll talk about it uh, as it gets more uh, relevant and you can see on the screen but for that initial sketch um, I almost always start my paintings you can see I'm working on two pages because it allows me to make more art and kind of move on when I'm stuck uh, when I don't know what to do in a certain painting, I just move on to the next one. Uh, but still having both of them on my desk uh, just works really, really well for my very scattered brain. I tend to lose interest quite fast. And so I really prefer to finish my paintings in one or two seatings. Usually I will have to wait for that initial layer of watercolor and gouache to dry uh, and then come back to it with pencils, but that tends to happen in the same day. And, and then the next day, mostly I'll be ready to move on, maybe add a few little um, finishing touches. So I like to start with wax pastels. These are by Carandash and they make two types of wax pastels, Neocolor 1, which are water resistant, Neocolor 2, which are water soluble. Neocolor 2 are by, by far more uh, popular, uh, I guess because of that water soluble um, quality. Of course, I prefer the Neocolor 1. <laughs> and I say of course because they make less colors with that formulation for some reason. And so sometimes I do have to use some Neocolor 2 in colors that don't exist exist in the Neocolor 1 range, but I like to have these lines uh, visible in my finished pieces and I love to start my painting with this. It's kind of like placeholders for me and putting these placeholders kind of allow me to, <laughs> I don't want to say paint in a <laughs> brain dead mode, but <laughs> it means that I make like 90% of the color and placement and composition decisions in those first few minutes of my painting. And then the rest of the time, I kind of paint by numbers and listen to my color cravings and just enjoy, you know, putting on pretty colors, putting down pretty colors, 
mixing colors and trying to kind of match things um, like different mixes of colors, like different shades of purple. It just really, really allows me to have kind of a relaxed process and not have to make a ton of decisions later. Or let's say my decisions are mostly then focused on color, which is, I would say, probably the the most important element of my paintings. I mean, it's a combination of things, but, but color is definitely at that the top of the list there. And so I really enjoy painting this way. And it, it just, I don't want to say revolutionized, but it really created for me uh, a totally different experience on kind of took not just my artwork, which I feel now is really uh, authentic and recognizable um, and has that kind of signature style, which was definitely one of my goals, but it is taking the my whole process to another level of enjoyment. So that first step with the wax pastels is quite quick. And I usually follow the rainbow color order when I'm adding those first lines. Um, it just works for me. Having painting like that and even arranging my studios and of course my palettes by rainbow order is my brain just really really loves that and responds to it and it's very easy for me to keep things uh, tidy and kind of have a place for everything so I definitely adopted this in also my wardrobe by the way <laughs> it's like the part of the clothes that are hanging they're also organized in rainbow order I mean, they're not as colorful as my color palette, but um, it's it's just a great way uh, to organize things. And for me, it's also a great way to paint. So let's move on to what I'm actually using. I'm using mostly gouache and a little bit of watercolors. Now, the reason that I've really kind of fallen in love with gouache lately is because of that kind of creamy... Um, quality that they have and that added opacity I just feel like now I have to say you don't need if if you're working with watercolors if you're used to painting with watercolors and you kind of want to try this look or you want to try gouache but you don't want to invest you know and start learning it is a different medium and i do feel there's a learning curve to it but i would suggest that you start with just a tube of white gouache and watercolors it's not exactly the same they are formulated differently but you can definitely get a lot of the effects that personally i'm after um, just with watercolors and white what I would recommend is kind of paying a little bit more attention to the consistency of your paint. I do find that in gouache, I enjoy working with kind of a more creamy consistency, whereas with watercolors, at least in the first stages, I tend to use a bit more water. So definitely play around with it. That's a great thing about watercolors. They're so easy to use. They're so easy to play with. And, you know, just add a tube of white gouache and see where it takes you. As I said, they do have gouache. They do have a slightly different formula. They are a little bit there. They are completely opaque with some watercolors, not all of them, but with some watercolors, if you use them a bit more heavily, they do have a sheen, um, I suspect because of the binder in them. And gouache doesn't have that, like ever. And so I do prefer the finish and the feel of gouache. However, I, there is no competition when it comes to color range. You definitely need to do a lot more mixing when you're painting with gouache, 
Whereas with watercolors, I feel, you know, you have companies like Daniel Smith with like 200 plus shades of watercolors. You don't see that in gouache. Um, I feel like that's a medium that is definitely geared towards illustrators and more professional artists as opposed to enthusiasts. That's at least my personal impression. And, you know, feel free to disagree with me. Um, but I feel like they... They're made for artists that, you know, mix colors with a lot of knowledge and are very comfortable mixing colors. And I always mix my own colors when I'm painting, especially my own neutral colors. But I also enjoy just having a lot of colors ready to go. Um, and not have to mix them. And so I do find myself reaching for my watercolors also when I'm painting with gouache. I don't feel like my gouache palette uh, satisfies me. And especially it's lacking in one area, which is darker colors. I just have, I, I really tend to use kind of special, specific watercolors when it comes to darker colors and those really just don't exist yet hopefully in the gouache world so what i'm talking about are mostly kind of muted colors that have separation and granulation which isn't really a thing in the gouache world i, I hope that changes maybe now that daniel smith is you know in the game of gouache <laughs> and uh, for example one of their popular colors cascade green it's a it's a green that really separates into this kind of earthy bluish green and then it has some uh, turquoise granulation so they formulated that also in gouache and you can still get that color separation and i i have to say when it comes to painting with gouache, there is something to be said that I also enjoy having that kind of flatness of the medium. Personally, I like it, especially because I use also pencils on top. Uh, it kind of allows you to build layers. So I don't know how much that effect of granulation and color separation actually adds to the traditional gouache look, but I also know that I don't like the dark colors that currently exist in gouache range, which will usually be something like a black or gray and sometimes maybe some dark, um, you know, greens or purples. It's just not really colors that I like. Um, I feel like they add just a bit too much flatness, too much darkness and I personally really love still using colors like Artemis, which is this, you know, beautiful moon glow dupe from Da Vinci. It's just a beautiful um, purple that also has separation. And I love colors like Zoazite, Genuine, uh, also from Daniel Smith, and other colors, um, which reminds me, I think I need to do an uh, unpopular opinion video about art supplies because can we talk about the Schmincke super granulating paints? Is it just me or did they drop the ball on their usual perfect formulation of colors with these? I feel like the ones that I've tried have way too much binder. Maybe it's kind of a must with these super granulating pigments um, to, to keep them kind of workable, but I am not loving the formulation of these. And I'm very, very surprised that Schmincke put out something that is less than perfect. Let me know in the comments, uh, what has your experience with these been like? Um, and so <laughs> getting to the point is that I do find myself reaching for my watercolor palette. Also when I'm using gouache, I think maybe, maybe, maybe in my future, there is um, a hybrid superstar palette of gouache and watercolors. Maybe that day is coming. And maybe I should also look at the new Daniel Smith gouache paints. I love the uh, Daniel Smith formulation of their gouache. It's fantastic. 
And if they um, put out some of their more special colors, I think they have now a moon glow version of gouache. I definitely want to try that uh, because I do like working with gouache nowadays. So let's talk a little bit more about what I'm doing as you see things progressing. Uh, also the brush that I'm using, it's like this student grade brush that I bought. Um, it's very inexpensive. It has synthetic fibers and it's just for my local uh, art store. I do think that gouache work better with a flat brush than with a round one. Um, although you can definitely get certain shapes much more easily or only I'm going to say with a round brush. So we'll see how I'm exploring that. I don't like it when I have a super wet drippy brush and flat brushes are good for that because they just hold less water. So we'll see. I have to play around and see. Now you can see now on the left side I kind of kept all of my elements more in... you see that I almost have like this frame around my paintings and then a lot of like white edges and I've been doing that more and more recently and then I thought maybe I should kind of go back a bit more to working on the entire surface of my painting and I'm still not sure what I think about it and probably as usual I went too far with kind of a heavy hand and I think I went if memory serves uh, I am recording the narration a few days later, um, kind of all rainbow <laughs> on the edges of the painting on the right. But that's definitely something that I want to touch on, which is the daily practice of painting and just having this kind of go-to process uh, because I feel this is the key to really developing your style and feeling free to experiment and try things. You don't get so precious when you know you're just going to be painting again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And there are, you know, hundreds and dozens of more paintings in your future. And there's no reason um, to be afraid to take risks and try things. And so that's what I did here. And I don't know, I think with a lot of paintings, there's also personal taste. And so if I ever decide to sell these or, you know, maybe there's an exhibition in my future or something like this, um, I'm pretty sure that, you know, other people will have a different taste than mine. And maybe my most favorite pieces are not necessarily going to be other people's favorite pieces. Uh, because art is very subjective and everyone likes something different. And so that's really kind of the fun part about it. Some people like things more minimalistic and then others like things more busy. And I would say my artwork definitely leans kind of busier. Uh, but also, you know, for that, there's th I see other artists make things that are a lot busier than mine. So... <laughs> There's always um, further you can go on that spectrum. Uh, the brush that I'm currently using is from Tintoretto and it is beautiful. It is a sword brush and I really, really love the versatility of it. And you can make with it the thinnest lines because the tip is very, very fine. Uh, but you can also make very expressive wide strokes. Uh, if you haven't tried a dagger brush or a sword brush, I highly, highly recommend that you do, especially if you like expressive brush strokes and you like a kind of seeing your own, the artist's hand, as I like to call it, and probably other people call it as well, but it's a very um, expressive way of applying paint and this is probably my favorite. This is the size six. Um, there are other similar brushes on the market. You don't have to get this particular one, but this is definitely my favorite. And so I wanted to mention it. And you can see that I have 
really learned to go in directions that speak to me. And you can see that I use a lot of color, but I actually don't let a ton of color get mixed up on my paintings. I really love to keep things kind of separate. The wax pastels definitely help with that. And I like to keep these colors pure and fresh. Um, I don't get too fanatical about it. You can see that sometimes they kind of touch each other and bleed. Um, and that's, that's part of the watercolor magic. I love that looseness. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of color here and they are each in their little areas. And that was it with my first layer of watercolors and gouache. I let it dry and now I'm coming in with pencils and adding a lot of little details. And this is again something that really took me kind of a long time to develop. And every time I sit and paint, there is always an element of experimentation. I never do exactly the same thing twice. I always try different things. And adding all of these lines with pencils has been very enjoyable. Again, it always goes back to what is just really fun to do. And what I find is that it is a great way to add a lot of detail and a lot of character and a lot of like whimsy and sketchiness to my paintings without um, without getting that feeling of overworked again this is my personal opinion uh, other people might think you know you should have stopped at x point um, and I keep pushing it forward um, so this is very very personal and very subjective but to me it feels like I can add more details without that overworked heavy hand feeling that I got many times when I try to do the same thing with watercolors and that's also one of the reasons that I am a big big fan of mixed media because personally I really don't feel there is just one medium that gives me everything before I move on to talking about pencils, I just want to mention that I have quite recent videos about my gouache palette and my watercolor palette. So if you're interested in specific colors that I use or which I have, which colors I have in my palettes, um, check out those videos and, you know, get those answers. If you have questions about something that I use in the video, then just please add also a timestamp because otherwise it's very, very hard for me to know, you know, which pink I used uh, on this painting. <laughs> so let's move on to pencils. Um, one of the joys of my life <laughs> is matching colors, matching shades of watercolors to shades of pencils. And this time I also added to my lovely um, carousel of uh, pencils almost or a lot of the drawing the Derwent drawing pencils now my favorite pencils of all times are Prismacolor they're regular pencils and these ones the Derwent drawing pencils that have this kind of very warm brown um, body to them the problem with these which I'm sure for some people this is like their you know that's all they need in pencils. Uh, the problem is that the color range is very muted. Now, I do enjoy these. The formulation is perfection. It has like this soft, I prefer soft pencils. It has this soft, um, very pigmented lead and they're just beautiful. If you wanna try them and you don't wanna commit to the whole set, just get a black one and, you know, feel the joy <laughs> It's just, they are such a joy to uh, paint with and sketch with. 
you can see it's just the the just the pigment goes on like a dream and they work so well on watercolors and gouache and paint and ever well not all kinds of paint but um matte paint that i tend to use i love them and so i thought actually i found a few more neutrals in this painting um and i thought i would bring them out and play around with them and so I did. And it was a lot of fun. If you like a more muted color palette, these pencils are just so lovely. So here I'm using the black one. This has been uh, an element that I really, really enjoy adding to my sketches or paintings. Um, just these accents of black patterns although I do hate what I did here to this um, sun umbrella yeah that I didn't like that at all but it's kind of done and I can't really cover it up without it looking extra weird <laughs> and so it'll have to stay but I won't be doing that again um, but yeah I love adding those accents in black and this is again this kind of painting if you want to call it that I don't know sketching mark making maybe is a better word for this this is very very therapeutic and very relaxing you just get into this kind of meditative meditative you know what I mean <laughs> state where you kind of repeat I find myself kind of repeating the same shapes It'll be some variation of like dots or lines or circles. Um, that's what I like. And again, I allow myself to experiment a little bit with each and every painting that I make. I should have probably mentioned this early, <laughs> earlier in the video, but I will do that now. And that is to remind you that you can speed up my talking, I tend to watch videos a little bit sped up unless the people are talking really, really fast. But you can do that. You just go to that gear icon in the video and you can speed up um, so that, you know, it doesn't take you as long <laughs> to watch this video. Uh, you can also slow it down, but I think I, I talk pretty slowly because... <laughs> I'm kind of looking at myself uh, painting and I'm trying to uh, get into my head and tell you what I was thinking and why I was doing what I was doing. I also want to talk a little bit about inspiration and I am definitely, definitely inspired by my love of color and color cravings, which means just how it makes me feel to see certain colors next to each other. Now, my paintings are very, very colorful, but if you notice, especially in the last months, they, the, the colors are quite concentrated. So uh, most of the pinks in my painting will be in like this small area and most of the yellows will be in this small area and that is true for almost all of the colors uh, and they tend to kind of flow a little bit like they look on the color wheel or in a rainbow this is not an exact science and I just kind of go with the flow but you can see that and if you go and watch my videos from previous years it definitely doesn't look like that. I used to paint quite differently and use color quite differently. And this method and this kind of process and art has, it's just been a joy to create and to kind of figure out that this is what I like and this is what speaks to me. So I think these two paintings were quite a bit more on the side of experimental things because usually, you know, I will try a few new things, but here I tried quite a bit. So you can see, I think because I had that inspiration from uh, the leaves changing and all that, 
uh, I went a little bit further with those references, with that kind of botanical elements, a little bit more leaves and suggestion of leaves. Not quite sure what I feel about it or how I feel about it, but uh, definitely tried a little bit more. And then next you'll see me adding some more colors to that other painting. With this one, I guess I felt that I can add my signature. And this has also been a very, very joyous discovery for me. Finally, uh, finding a way to add my name to my paintings, finding kind of a handwriting and a look that has the same feel as my artwork. It took a long time and this is quite recent, but it's such a nice, such a nice discovery. So there I am adding my name and I try to do that now to every piece of artwork that I feel like I want to keep. I'm also getting better with just getting rid of stuff. And this is true for all areas of my life, but also with kind of holding on to older paintings and experiments that just really do nothing for me except add another thing I have to keep track of, keep inventory and, you know, um, meet <laughs> every time I try to organize something. Again, I have to deal with it. I can, I have to look through it and it's just easier to get rid of things, uh, especially because I do find myself enjoying starting with a blank page. And if I have older works, pieces that I've already painted something on them, honestly, I'm not that interested. And so it feels really, really great to just move on, get rid of things that don't speak to me and that I don't feel like, you know, let's say <laughs> if someday in the future, if I ever become a well-known artist <laughs> and there are exhibitions about my work and, you know, I especially, I mean, well, I don't know what the future holds, but I love seeing exhibitions where you can see sketches of artists and it's probably one of like my favorite things sketches that look that look of like half finished um, pieces but uh, the work that I'm talking about that I want to throw away uh, no exhibition would ever <laughs> consider putting that it's just really really bad stuff and so let go I give you permission to also let go and not have to keep everything because you know it's a piece of paper that you might put some gesso on it and use it again. Sure, it could be, but are you the kind of person that does that? I know I don't. I know that many times, most times, I don't. Most times, I just prefer to start with a fresh piece of paper because I don't have that in me to take those steps before I paint. And so I give myself permission to skip that get rid of those things, take them out of my home, out of my life, out of my headspace, out of my actual space, and focus on what I do enjoy. Okay, and now you see me really experimenting with that rainbow um, situation <laughs> around my painting. And I think the reason that I felt more comfortable and braver uh, to experiment with this was those lines on that sun umbrella, those black lines, it kind of looks like a road or something that, you know, goes into the horizon. I don't know. I just really, really don't like it. And so I thought, okay, I have permission to ruin this painting because I'm not that attached to it. And basically what I tried to do is just add color around the edges, kind of following the colors that were next to it. So I'm really just kind of expanding the area of the painting. And I don't know. I mean, I think when I frame these paintings and I also have that passepartout, you know, that like extra white layer 
uh, it doesn't have to be white, but I like it to be white when that you can add around your art um, that is also under glass and framed. I'm not talking about the frame. I'm talking that extra piece of paper. I don't know. We call it passepartout. Is there a different name for it in English? Let me know in the comments if you survived this far in the video. But I feel like that if I have that, then maybe I don't necessarily need all of this white space in my paintings, which I love. I love having that white space. I think it just adds that lightness and freshness and really allows me to use color freely because it still all has like some room to breathe. Um, and so my thinking was, you know, first let's try to see how I feel about this, about, you know, going with color all the way to the edges of my paper. But I definitely feel like I need to um, just get a frame and see if it actually translates. But I feel like if you add that white border and then the frame, um, I think it could work. I think I could paint on a larger percentage of real estate uh, in, you know, on my paper, sorry, trying, struggling to find the words and also like looking at the screen and trying to figure out what is working for me and what is not working for me. So that's, that's also interesting. And another thing that I've been really, really enjoying to do recently, and you'll probably see that also in future videos, is adding these kind of puddles of watercolor on top of areas that look of like layers and puddles. I absolutely love that. Sometimes it's just, sometimes it almost looks like you spilled something on the painting, <laughs> but I love that. <laughs> and to me, it just adds that kind of layer of, again, that like looseness fluid, messy mood that I absolutely love having in my paintings. So we have a few more minutes and I have to say, I think this is a bit too long also for me as a narrator because I don't have so much to say <laughs> about my paintings. But it is almost the end of November, which I feel I should have probably already posted kind of gift guides and um, best of this year. I definitely want to do those videos. Um, you know, let me know if you're looking forward to those, if you enjoy seeing those. Um, I love, love, love seeing artists' absolute favorites. I much, much prefer those videos to... Um, you know, reviews or first impressions, because I feel like only when you see what an artist actually uses, that gives you kind of the best, um, that's the best information to know what they actually love using. And, you know, you could have a really great product that just doesn't work for you. And it doesn't mean the, the quality is bad, but it's just, doesn't work for you. So I love making those favorite videos and I love making those monthly favorites, but yearly favorites, that's like a whole new level. And I think that'll be really fun to make uh, as well as maybe some new superstar colors in my palette. So I hope to film those videos for you. It just needs a little bit of planning and some brain power that I'm very, very struggling to have <laughs> operate these days. Um, so we'll see when that comes, but it's definitely something I want to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun for you to, you know, just sit back and relax and enjoy these pieces coming together. I don't know how I feel about them. Uh, I think the one on the left, I really, really enjoy. And I love those suggestions of I don't know more fall colors it's just like blobs of paint but they started as trees in my head uh, I think on the right painting they kind of got lost I don't feel like it looks like trees on the left side it looks a little bit more um, 
I don't know, maybe because they're like staggered next to each other, those pink and uh, orangey trees. But it was just a joy to make these paintings. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye bye.